Hey everybody, it's Shannon Marin here with another episode of Second Home Vacation Location. I have Robert Vargas with me today in the Mayan Riviera to tell us all about it. Yeah. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Just uh, just got back from Mexico Saturday, like midnight, and now I spend one day just turning my brain off. Oh, God, and yeah. then just starting my day today, and I have after you, I speak with you. I have to head to my office to talk to my broker because we've Mexico is just kind of like blowing up, and um, we need to strategize because I'm getting so much interest right now. Wow. And, um, we may have to open an office in Playa del Carmen, and uh, he's th- thinking of even opening up an office in Merida. Because there's a lot of people there also. So things are going good. Busy. Yeah. yeah. And, and who are you with again? Go Global Realty. Go Global Realty. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, That's interesting. I, I, there's so many na- different names. Like in Canada, we have like the top five, right? And then. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> are you with EXP? Go, Go Global. That's a good name. Yeah. Are you with EXP? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I used to be with EXP when I first got my license with uh, Tomorrow. And, okay. uh, but um, it, for what I wanted to do in Mexico, it really wasn't conducive because I needed a, a very, very dedicated broker yeah. who was going to support me there. And um, mm-hmm. Michael Ring, who's kind of like one of the head people in LVR and NAR, and he does business in Dubai. And we've got about 65 agents representing 30 countries wow yeah so um and he had nobody in mexico so yeah so the the timing all worked out unbelievably and he's Mm -hmm. been very supportive really oh that's great that's good stuff so that obviously with the name go global that is Mm -hmm. the that's the whole business model is to is to go global and mm-hmm. and hit other countries and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's excellent. That's a that's a great business model. You know, yeah. yeah. I think like I think with the brokers here in Canada, um, like I don't lean on the brokers too much. I think the EXP brokers is reachable i've got some good agents with exp that i can reach out to when needed there and i've got an ex an excellent team here like with admin staff and all of that that takes care of my back end so you know i think it'll be I, once i get there <laughs> <laughs> and you will I I will I will I have to get my Arizona license finished first. Okay. Because I'm going to Arizona, get back down to our place in Arizona in September. I'm gonna get that out of the way. I have people that want to join my team in Lake Havasu. Get them up and running, and once they're doing all right, then I can head down to Mexico and. and uh, yeah, I used to uh, party in Havasu. From the time I was maybe 25 through 35, we used to have a boat go down there all the time. A friend of mine had a house. It's so funny how you're, you want to market Havasu now. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's, there's a, there's a lot of people from, from here, from Vancouver Island that okay. are, that are in Havasu. Like, oh, wow. Okay. I didn't, I didn't even know about Havasu until a friend from here had told me about it, went down, checked it out, went, oh, this is a pretty yeah. cool place. Love it. Yeah, Going to buy something here. Uh-huh. And then realized that there was a bunch of other people from my town here that actually already owned there. <laughs> and now I'm sending lots of referrals down there to my realtor down there. Okay. Right? And I'm like, hmm, I should just get a license here too. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I got my license, believe it or not. Uh, I've been real estate since 2007, and you're going to get a kick out of this. I used to own a chain of flower shops, and I saw an ad in the paper for Trump University. <laughs> and yes, ma'am. And I signed up, 
with Trump University, dropped about a hundred grand with them. Um, found out that it was not what it was talked up to be, but it got my feet wet. And I learned through the school of hard knocks who to trust and who not to trust and what people are just about doing and just trying to sell. And it, it was bad. And what's so sad is I don't even think, I honestly feel in my heart, I don't think Trump knew what was involved. He never was involved in the so-called university. No. And they just he hired somebody, uh, I know his first name was Michael, to, um, to run the operation. And Michael just went out and hired uh, guru speakers that were already known in the industry and brought them in. And it was just a big sales pitch. So that's how I got my start in Vegas because I was in L.A. Okay. And my so-called mentor says, oh, you got to go to Las Vegas because this is when the crash happened. You know, you can buy houses dirt cheap. And um, they knew I had some money because I had just come into a lawsuit. So I wound up coming here, buying property, learning how to flip property and all that other good stuff. And I did it up until 2011. Then the Chinese bought a lot of property here. The market wasn't conducive for flipping. Went back to LA. Then um, wasn't doing much with real estate. I had a chain of flower shops there that I was kind of overseeing. And um, then I wanted to get a divorce in 15 and then came back here to Vegas, started flipping again. And um, but then you saw, you know, what happened two years ago with COVID and the market here just went south. And then with pricing now, you can't flip here. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. And um, so I got my license last June um, and my instructor was Tamara and she actually recruited me to join the XP because she knew I vacation in Mexico every summer in mm -hmm. Cancun. And I had talked to her about opening up a Mexico market and she liked that idea. Yeah. So we went to a, um, a trade mission with the LVR here in Las Vegas. We went to uh, uh, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Met with a couple of developers, but the broker who was the brokerage who, who originated the uh, trade mission here, he got COVID, so he couldn't go. So his partner in Texas wound up spearheading it. Well, he wound up spearheading it because he was already had a relationship with developers there. Um, he was marketing Riviera Maya, and he was getting an override on anybody he can get to buy there. So uh -huh. it wasn't really completely honest. Okay. It opened up my eyes to the market. And right. tomorrow was there with me. Michael Ring, my new broker, was there. Yeah. Uh, my life mentor, um, Randy, um, who is a broker with Keller Williams in Maui, was there. So that's how I met these people. And I want to go into global. Uh, Randy is helping support me and my needs in um, – Mexico, because he's got a huge interest, because the average price in Maui is like 1.4 million, two bedroom yeah. comp. Yeah. So he's sending me clients. I'm giving him a referral fee. Yeah. And, um, and that's kind of how it all got started. And it's happening very, very quickly. Um, that, I mean, that's super quick, because you haven't been in the Mexico market that long. No, and I already have five condos under contract. Um, I've got interest in about a dozen more. I'm getting asked by Airbnb people how they can get into the market because they have they have money behind them. So I'm explaining the process to them. Uh, they're wanting to get set up with Airbnb there. However, their whole issue, the numbers are great, better than here. Yeah, however, yeah. However, they don't have the team there, the cleanup crew, all that other stuff. Well, guess who's setting that up for them? Me. And yeah. I'm not getting paid off of it, but I know enough of the people there who work in the hotel industry that are willing to work for them. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's been a ride. And, wow. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited. No kidding. Okay. How did you find the process of learning to sell real estate in Mexico? 
Well, it started with the trade mission. We met with a developer by the name of Simca. They're one of the largest in Rivera Maya, family owned for like 30 years. So you can trust their product. They deliver on time. Um, and they pretty much went over the nuts and bolts when we first went there on the three days. But since then, I've been going back at least one to two weeks every month. Um, okay. And I stay in, um, I've got a bunch of points through timeshares. Yep. And one of my resorts is right there in Playa del Carmen. And okay. so I go and I just use points, stay there for a week or two. Yep. And then while I'm there, it's maybe 10 minutes from Simca's corporate office. So I right. hang out there. I learn the business through them. I've got a good re working relationship with the director of Canada and the United States markets with Simca. Her name is Sonia. Okay. And she's pretty much been teaching me everything. Um, is in and this there's somebody named Chris in that. Chris is the CEO. Yes, he's a good he's a good friend of mine. Oh, okay, because I got a message from Sonia this morning actually. Yep. Because he must have seen a post that I did or so, or something yeah. like that or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, and he's kind of the marketing uh, guru for Simca. He does all the traveling, all the sales, and um, so they've come kind of taught me a lot. So I really pushed their product. And in turn, what was key for me was joining different Facebook and WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Okay. And there's a lot of them that are created because of problems. Okay. And they're now my clients. Yeah. So it's yeah. worked out. Yeah, because I'll I just kind of sit back and I hear these stories. Oh, this I left a deposit and I got scammed and uh, this happened and that happened. So I started doing research while I was there, talking to developers who are there, and they know I'm the they call me the the Mexico guy, and I'm also Mr. Las Vegas here because when you see Las Vegas there, you're like the king, right? And I'm like I don't know, and but they're drawn to me because they can see the potentiality with clients and buyers. So they're very honest and they tell me the truth. And the bottom line is 90% of the so-called realtors in Riviera Maya are not licensed. Yeah. They, yeah. They, can, they can be anybody off the street, get a business card and put realtor on there. And that's where the corruption starts. That's the, that's the scary part, right? Yeah. That's, that's really the scary part. Yeah. Yeah. With, I was, I was just shocked when I found that out. I found that out only about six months ago. Yeah. And uh, that's totally the scary part. Yeah. And what's helped me a lot, to be honest, is the fact of I'm a licensed agent here in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And since I'm a licensed agent and I bilingual and I spend so much time there, people now trust me. Yeah. Because I'm going to treat them with the same integrity and loyalty as I do people here in the States. I'm not yeah. going to be. I'm not a, a Mexico agent. I'm a member of AMPI. Um, mm -hmm. So I know all the rules and regulations, but everything goes through my brokerage. All the yeah. wire transfers, everything, all the referral fees go through Go Global. Um, yeah. I've got agents here who are happy as can be because there's no, there's no inventory here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And I'm offering them right now 50% referral fee, which is unheard of. Yeah. So, for the most part, I get 6%, sometimes as much as 8% from the developers. Um, and I'll give 3% or more to the agent for a referral. And they do nothing. Right. And so that's kind of my role model, the, the role yeah. I play in. And the, it's really working very well. Actually, I got to get back to uh, Playa on June 11th. So I've got yeah. some clients that are going to be there. That's good. Hey, and it's easy just to zip back and forth. Like I've got a friend from, from here from Vancouver Island that's selling in PV. Mm -hmm. And I mean, really it's a direct flight from, from the Island, yeah. you know, to land in PV and he'll go for a weekend and tour some clients around and yep. home again. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Interesting, interesting business model where, I don't know. I find a, a lot of realtors are still just in the box, small town. They need to be physically present all the time. Yeah. Won't let go of that 
old school stuff yep. and you know not not thinking outside the box so okay, and a lot of them are still hesitant i get um, a lot of agents they'll see me on facebook i'm getting a lot of friend requests from agents all over now and yeah. And I don't even know who they are, but I just, I'll add them because I see they're in real estate. Yeah. And then they start following me and they'll see me in the middle of the jungle looking at, uh, you know, construction being built in Tulum or in Playa, um, houses for sale in Merida, brand new, remodeled for, you know, $200,000 in the colonial yeah. town. They, they see that and they're like, wow, that's available. And I'm like, yeah, but it's in Mexico. And I'm like, big deal. I'm here. You tell me yeah. what you need. We'll get the, the notarios, the attorneys, everything's in place. We'll hold your hand. We'll educate you. Um, so just getting over that first hump. And I've noticed mm-hmm. once they buy one, they see the smooth process. Yeah. The word spreads. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely scary for a lot of people. Like, um, you know, my son-in-law is, is Mexican. Uh, he lives here in Canada and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when we do end up buying, we'll probably buy with the kids, um, and all of that. But, uh, the whole process for anybody that's not in real estate, like even just to buy in the U S from Canada, people question me all the time. They're like, (laughs) how did you do that? (laughs) I'm like, well, I went down there. I didn't even go down there. I bought it online. And then I went down there and I closed on it. Um, but, you know, it's it's just such a scary process for some people to get outside of that and buy in another country, right? So Mexico yeah. should be no different, except that it has that stigma where you weren't allowed to buy in the restricted zone and all of that kind of stuff. And then the other rumors that you know, your land is going to get taken from you and all of those. That (laughs) comes from the Pacific side from 20 years ago. I just had a deal with that with a client who was ready to back out. And I explained to him the process. I said, look, somebody bought land in Ensenada, Mexico, from Joe Schmo down the street, went ahead without doing their due diligence to find out if there was an ejido or who who owned the land, built all these homes, sold them to all these foreigners. And then the original owner comes back after everything's built, goes to the federal agents and say, hey, these people built on my land. He had his documentation and they all got kicked out. That was the the person who bought and the developer's fault. It wasn't the government that did anything wrong. No, no, it was people that don't, uh, you know. do their legwork. Yeah, Yeah. so like, like now I explain to everybody, the way it works in, in Riviera Maya is you're going to buy in a trust. Okay. Yep. You control the trust. The bank, who's your partner in it, can do anything with it. It's good for 50 years and yep. it's renewable until infinity. And you yep. can put it down to your kids, your grandkids. And I explain yep. that all to them. And the government can come and take it. It's a condo or if it's a, a beach house, which I'm also selling to in Progresso. Um, yep. It's the same type of process. Everything is through a trust. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I think it's just the fear of the unknown, mm-hmm. you know, the, f- the fear of the unknown of the processes. And once you yeah. learn it, like you say, once they, you know, somebody gets comfortable with the process, it's not such a big deal anymore. Mm-hmm. And once they go there, um, they fall in love and, and oh, any, yeah. any fear they may have had, they just fall in love. Like they can't even believe this place is there. Yeah. For yeah. that price. And like right yeah. now. Um, yeah. Tell me about some of your projects and things that you're working on selling. Okay. Um, we'll start in Merida. I've got a good relationship with an American developer who's from Alabama. His name is Larry. He went there about eight years ago. He had a nightmare of a time buying a house. He then decided he used to work for Marriott. He grew up with Marriott since he was 18 and he was one of their developers until he retired. He opened up his own company there because he saw a need, one stop shopping. Yeah. I, I now sell his properties. He's okay. got, um, he does a lot of uh, fine old colonials. His architects revamp them. They're 
basically like brand new, and then he resells them for between two to two hundred fifty thousand. Um, he also has bought up a lot of land there in the Yucatan Peninsula, like uh, Progreso, um, and he's now selling land, and his architects are building custom homes okay. uh, for, for buyers. So he's doing that now, and he's having me market and sell them here. Um, Because the bottom line, he doesn't have time and Mexican agents, they make one commission and they're on siesta. That's how they, (laughs) I could say that because I'm Latino, okay, I'm Mexican, but that's how they are, they are there. They, I tried to, I had a a couple of buyers, I would call Larry, Larry would be here in the United States buying other hotels, he would say call my agents, I call them, they don't even respond. So I finally told him, I said, look, I'm an independent contractor. Put me on your payroll and I will market and sell your products. And that's right. the relationship I have with him now. So in Progresso and in Merida, I sell uh, remodeled homes. Okay. Already, already furnished price points of between 150 to 300,000. Um, all are great for Airbnbs in, uh, in nice. Merida. Um, also selling land and beach houses in Progresso or anywhere from I've got one that was on the market for 175,000 USD on the beach. That's and crazy. Exactly. So I've got that whole niche in, in the Yucatan. And then in Riviera Maya, I'm currently selling Cloud del Carmen and Tulum, primarily condos because it's too expensive. Um, beach houses there are basically non existent unless you want to spend a million dollars on up, which yeah. you can sell. Um, yeah. So for the most part, I sell two types of properties. The developments that have like over 100 units, which you have five or six pools on the top deck, all the amenities like a resort oh, wow. hall, um, starting price of about 200000 on up. Okay. Um, That's so still like such that. a decent price. Yeah. And what's really hot right now are two bedroom lockoffs, and for Airbnb reasons. So I'm selling a lot of those. Um, and then the other niche I have is boutique condos where they bought land right there, maybe two or three blocks from Fifth Avenue in Playa del Carmen, and they build maybe 20 units. Yeah. It has a bar on the top, a no host bar. It's got a pool up there on the roof. Um, Chances are it might have a small gym at that. Okay. Um, but the units are, it's boutique style. So elevators, it's small, it's quaint. It's great for Airbnbs. Um, I've got some right now. The price points are about 100000 110000 for a one-bedroom studio. That's so, great. Yeah. So people are buying them, Airbnb and being them, and then going there to, to visit Playa on Fifth Avenue because it's basically a tourist destination. Yeah. And so those are kind of my two markets okay. and price points. So how much would um how much would an Airbnb get per month, say? There's two seasons there, high and low season. Okay. Right now, there's only high season. Uh that area is now the number one tourist destination in the world. Yeah. Um on average, a one-bedroom studio can get on the low side. I would say something new, decent. Uh, I would say seventy-five dollars a night. Yeah. Uh, for a studio, on up to two hundred dollars a night if it's a two-bedroom. Okay. So sure. um, that's kind that's of where the margins great. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's 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 great. I mean, any anywhere from probably like, like two to six thousand dollars a month, depending on. Mm-hmm. how much square footage you have bedrooms and all of that. Yeah. 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 yeah you can't so, find a return like that anywhere else. No. And a lot of it is, is, is trust. And I think that's why my broker, Michael, he wants to, he does property management here also. He's got over 300 properties. When I took him there last February, after I joined his brokerage, I said, Michael, you have to go with me. I want you to know what I'm going to sell for you. Yeah. And he fell in love with Playa del Carmen. And then I took him to Merida. He fell in love with Merida. And the first thing he said is, I want to open up a coffee shop in each place with an office above. 
Oh, what a great idea. And we inter- he went and had a long talk with Chris at Simca. And- oh, you just lost your sound. You just muted yourself. Okay. Oh, there, there you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Michael, uh, on our trip, had a long talk with Chris of Simca. And they have their own sister company, Happy Address, that does a property management for everything they sell if you want them to manage it for you. Okay. He saw the nightmare. They're charging, I think, 35% to manage your property. I heard it was somewhere like that, like anywhere between 20 and 40%. Yeah. And he saw the numbers and his eyes just widened up. And that's where he said, you know what? I can make more money here working remotely, doing property management for investors so they can trust him also because he's American. Yeah. So we see all the property management. And, um, and I told him, I said, I don't want to be a property manager. He goes, Robert, you handle the sales. You make all the commission. I can care less. I want the check every month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of where we're at now. He, he was a little skittish in the beginning about Mexico. And then he said, look, I'll back you, but you got to be there. And prior to this year, I was only in Mexico for maybe two or three weeks a year. And that was on vacation in Cancun or in yeah. uh, Canada. Yeah. And so since then, I told my wife, I'm committed. I feel this thing. It's going to it's gonna be a gold mine. So we've been budgeting and planning for me to be in Riviera Maya at least two weeks every month. And I've been doing it since yeah. then. And That's now- great developers are coming out of the woodwork. They are like, I, as soon as I land there, I post, I'm here in, in Playa or here in Tulum on, on WhatsApp. Robert, we want to do a presentation. Where are you at? And I, I'll tell them, oh, I'm here in Playa. We'll have a driver pick you up and bring you to Tulum and we're going to make a presentation, show you what we have to offer. And it's so, it's hilarious. And, um, but what's kind of cool is they ask, what do Americans want? And we will build. Yeah. So it's 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 a good it's a good feeling considering wow. license for one year and things have just gone. Yeah, crazy. yeah. Well, I can see like you're very easy to talk to, and you know, I mean, you know, you got an honest face. Go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my so, come first. It's no matter what. Well, that's, you know, that's the main reason that we're in this business, right, is to help people. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're the ones with the knowledge about how things work and all of that. And people come to us and they depend on us, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's no different whether you're in Canada, the US, Mexico, or somewhere else, right? You know, that's Mm -hmm. the name of the game. So, and also, I kind of understand realtors are realtors. They're out for themselves. However, they can max their commission. They don't like to share. Yeah. And so I know that. So I know they have a weak spot. And that weak spot is if somebody's going to give them half their commission, hell, I'll give them the business. Mm-hmm. And from what I know in Riviera Maya right now, I believe I'm probably one of the very few agents here in the States, who is there on a regular basis, marketing and selling. Okay, so some of the other agents that are from the U.S., just they're not there. Yeah, like okay. the, the Ed Egan, who's from Texas, he's big on selling Riviera Maya. He used to live there for about five years, and he's back in Texas, and he'll be in Mexico maybe once every three months. Yeah, okay. Um, and what my, my contention is, to get trust, I have to have my boots on the ground. I have to be there. Yeah. And that's what I am. That's what I do. I'm yeah. there to watch your back. Anything new comes up. Like this morning, I just got a lead um, on a development, which is Simca's, where they've yeah. got two bedroom units. Or they're throwing out the door for under 200 grand in Tulum and a resort style f- uh, facility. Wow. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, it's just, I've been blessed. I mean, it's a lot of yeah, good things yeah, that's exciting. I can't wait to get down there. So, we'll be down in uh, 
in January, but we're touring the country before we end up in the Maya. Like we'll, okay. we'll go do Baja. We're going to go do um, Mazatlan and PV and the, and the whole thing. We're going to drive. Okay. And, uh, and then, but the end game, like I'm still really leaning towards play it for, for the investment. Mm -hmm. um, we were in a play a few years ago. We spent a bunch of time in Cancun. We've been mm -hmm. in, into Tulum just to tour around for a day. Yeah. Um, I've spent some time in, in PV before, but I really, I really like the feel of playa. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning towards, but, but we're yeah. going to take probably, you know, a month to tour from the U S border until we oh, get wow. down to the until we get down to the Maya and just tour around okay. and, and stuff and then uh, and then plant ourselves there for a couple of months and see uh, see what happens it, it will yeah. probably end up being more and I probably won't be in a rush to come back to Canada so. <laughs> 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 you yeah. know so good. like you say like if you're gonna start any kind of um, business to where people trust you, you really got to dig in and learn and, mm. and, you know, know what's going on. Right. So, yeah. And, and another thing that i I've noticed because I ask a lot of questions when I'm there. Um, here's a, a typical ex example. Uh, I got invited to a presentation uh, last, not Friday, but the Friday before in Tulum, they came, pick me up, took me to the presentation. There was 20 other agents agents there um all they cared about was how much commission do we get they didn't ask about the development they this development i posted on facebook it it, it reminds me of my timeshare complete resort all amenities as if you're in a timeshare you can get a unit starting at i think 150,000 in tulum got all the bells and whistles five star managed by an american company Wow. It's unbelievable. So I was asking about what's included, the furnishings, the appliances, background information about the developer, and every and I'm asking in English. And everybody else there speaks Spanish, but the presenters were bilingual. And I was the only one out asking questions. Yeah. And everybody else is looking at me like, who is this guy? Yeah. And and I passed out all my cards, you know. And then when I left, all these so-called agents started telling me or asking me, hey, we'll be your, your agents here in, in Mexico and we'll split the commission. And we're <laughs> it's like, I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding, right? Because if you're going to yeah. refer, you know, you need to be able to trust yeah. the referral too, right? So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. my whole thing is if somebody wants to buy, I want to make sure I'm there. Um, yeah. I'll schedule my time. Uh, every two weeks, every month I'm there, I'll tell people, this is when I'm going to be there. If you want to come down for a day or two to look at what you're buying and then fly back home, it's cheap enough. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll show you what, we, what we've got. Yeah. So, but it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, but this is my, 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 my game plan. Being there, I started researching assisted livings. I only found one in oh. all of Riviera Maya. And there oh. was one in Merida that had 12 beds and they were charging 3,500 US dollars a month, okay? Which is still cheaper than the States. And I started thinking, and I told my broker this too, within three years, I'm gonna have land, build 21 units on the beach in um, Puerto Morelos and in uh, Progreso. Yeah, and focus on expats because they're retiring there, and they're and they don't and they don't want to go back. No, and they're going to need assisted living, and there's no place there to to go to. And I can offer them for even twenty eight hundred bucks a month, all inclusive. We'll do laundry and cook and clean. Considering the labor force there gets paid eight dollars a day. Wow, it, it's a win win wow. for everybody. So that's. That's what I'm going to have. Uh, and that's going to be my retirement, basically. Just cash flow that. My wife's a nurse. She's going to yeah. be getting her um, nursing credential to be a nurse practitioner. And yeah. she's going to oversee it for me. I've already spoken to hospitals. 
they'll come to the facilities and service the uh, expats because they're going to get cash. Wow. So it's, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities there in Mexico. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for being here with us. Uh, That was very helpful information to everybody out there that's thinking of moving to Mexico, particularly the Mayan Riviera. So thanks so much for joining us. No problem. It's been a pleasure of mine uh, to be on board your show. And if there's anything I can do in Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Cancun, or even Merida, the Yucatan, I'm here to help uh, any of of your clients and viewers in any way I can. Okay. What's the best way to reach out to you? You can reach me uh, at um, Caribbean Retirement Living at yahoo.com. That's my direct email that I use for Riviera Maya. And I tend to respond within 24 hours um, with anything I can do to be of assistance. Perfect. Perfect. 